Welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's other runtime action we're going to go over is the Move Layer Runtime. And what this runtime is offering is a way for you to be able to move this object in between the layers that you have established in your scene. So let's get started. And before we start to show examples of how this works, I'm going to show you how my scene is crafted. So I'm going to click Cancel Out and I'm going to go to Scenes. So now we can see how my layers are set up. I have three layers. I have an above layer, an objects layer, and a floor layer. And if we remember, the priority goes from left to right. So the highest priority to display on the scene is going to be your far most left layer. And then it gets lower priority and lower priority as you move to the right. So the floor scene, our lowest priority, has most of my floor tiles that I want in this scene. It also has an object on this layer so that we can test out the runtime eventually. In the objects layer, I have most of my objects, and I also have the tile wall detection tiles that I want to prevent my walking player from moving to. And this is important, if this wasn't on the same layer as the object was, then it would not prevent movement. So something to keep in mind. And then on the above layer, I don't have anything on here. This is just to show that you would want an above layer eventually when you're making your maps. So you'll notice I just have these three layers and that is how my scene is set up. So let's go back to objects. And how we will begin is by having our professor, when he walks, he will then move layers down to the floor layer, so he'll lose his priority against tile walls. Because right now, if we play test, we'll see that when I move up against the tile wall, I cannot move any further. So when I click out of here and I click add, I will add the move layer. And then I'll go up to the only option that's available in this runtime action. It's called destination layer. So what layer do you want this object to now be on? And if I click the pull down menu, we are given a list of all the layers to choose from. You'll notice that they're layer one through four. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is it layer one through four when in my scene that I created, I only had three layers first off, and I also had them named. I had them named above, objects, and floor. So where is, how do you know which layer? And I'm going to get to that, I'm going to get to exactly why, and I'm going to get to how you solve that. But the first thing I just want to briefly go over is that we have to remember that these objects are global. They are for every scene. They're not a respecter of a certain scene. So that's why you're seeing layer 1 through 4. Now, just to get an example on here real quick of what this does, I'm going to select the, scene, the layer that I know objects is referring to, which is layer three, and I'm going to hit OK. So now when the player walks, he is going to be moved to layer three, which is the floor, and now he will be able to walk through the tile wall detection. Now as I move down, I walk right through the tile wall and I'm also below it. I can also walk through the objects that I was on the same layer as, now I'm not. And now I can interact with objects that are on the layer I'm now on, the floor. So that is how move layer works. It moves you to the layer that you specify. You can only move the object that's calling the runtime, so that's one thing to note. So now let's get into the specifics. Let's get into the first thing of why was there four layers to choose from when I only had three? And just to show this, how this works, is when I hit cancel and I go back to scenes and I'm gonna go to another scene that I called extra scenes here and you'll notice that I have four layers on this scene. So the reason it referred to four layers is because it goes based off the most layers that you have on any scene. So if you have a scene with 10 layers, it's going to give you the option layer one through 10. And I'll show this by adding a couple more layers. Now if we go back to objects and we clicked into our move layer runtime and we click the drop down menu, we'll see that now we're presented with a list of layer one through six. So now because of that one scene where we had the most layers, the maximum amount of layers out of any scene, we now have the option to select from one of those layers. 
So now let's get into the other issue of how come they're not named the same as my scene. And to solve this one, I'm going to click not set and we're going to click OK. And we're going to get into this one a little early. We're going to get into the changeable even after placement on scene. And now head back over to the scenes tab, click on the object that currently has this runtime, which is the professor object. And on the right hand side, we can now set specifically for the scene the destinated layer. And by clicking the drop down menu, it now shows us the names of the layer and it has the correct amount because now we have made this runtime specific to the scene. It's not a global catch all anymore. It is specific to this scene by clicking that button. So if we gave it the floor destination and we click play test, we will get the same interaction that we did when we set it globally to go to layer three. However, this time it was much easier and much more readable because it was specific to the scene. So now that we've seen changeable even after placement, let's go over a few different interactions that this runtime has. And how we will do that is we will go back to objects. I'm going to remove this runtime from the professor object and we're going to go to the move layer bot now. I have a first state which does nothing and then as soon as I press A it will run the move layer runtime. So we will click add and I'm going to click on move layer and since it's easier to use changeable even after placement on scene that's how I'm going to set the layer. And then I'm going to add one more runtime. It's going to be a template move setting and it's going to be moving towards a player group. And I'm going to click OK. So let's go to our scene now since that's where we will be setting this and click on our move layer bot. And I have it not set so it is currently on the object scene. And since the chair is closer to this object than this chair, it's going to move towards this scene but it's on the lower layer. So let's see the interaction. Let's click play test. And when I press A, you'll see that the move layer object moves to the chair object that's on the floor. So what's interesting is that it moved to the object. However, the wall detection or the attack detection did not trigger the chair to do anything. If we were to exit out of here and I was to set the move layer bot's destination to be the floor so it moves the layer and then it moves towards the chair and I hit play test and I hit A you'll see that it moves towards the chair except for this time it stops because the wall detection's intact and the attack detection's going off because you can see the chair is getting hit the invincibility is going off so there are some things to consider here let me exit out of here and the first thing to consider, if you have two objects and they're both on different layers, the runtime actions of the objects will work normally. We saw that when this move layer bot moved to the chair that was on a different layer. It moved just like it was supposed to. However, this leads us to the second thing to consider, is that the animation detections did not work if they were on different layers. And so that's really the question you need to ask yourself when you're using this runtime action is, do I need the objects to have detections or not? And if you do, then they need to be on the same layer. And this was true for bullets, facing checks, distance checks, field of vision checks, locking, movements, all the tests that I ran, ran true that runtime actions will work but the attack detections, the wall detections, the collision detections, they did not work unless they were on the same layer. So with that said, that is the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you have a cool method you've used or if something I missed, please feel free to comment down below. And I will catch you at the next video.